Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Cool. En- enjoying this this magnificent drink over here. Yeah. One, I, one of my favorites. I know. I, I thought out um, some of my grenadine f- when I went out of town. Yeah. So got to drink it now. <laughs> yeah. So Mexican fighting squad it is. It was either that or a scofflaw. Oh, yeah. Oh. Definitely a fan of the Mexican firing squad. Yeah. I already yeah. had some limes cut up. I'd have to cut up lemons for the scofflaw. I'd also have to open a bottle of uh of dry vermouth, so Yeah. I mean this this may be one of my like all time favorite drinks. Like I I can't actually think of one that I like more. Yeah. I mean I, I do enjoy cool. a good margarita, but I like I'd take this over a margarita any day. Well, it's a variation on a margarita. Yeah, but it's a it's there's a pretty some mileage between those two. Yeah, I mean flavor wise, sure. Because uh, you, you, I guess you're going maybe m- less citrus. Yeah, because you already get plenty of citrus with the lime and a margarita, and yeah. then you're adding an orange liqueur on top of it. Although that's your sweet, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're you're just substituting the orange liqueur for grenadine. Yeah. Now part of it is. It's my grenadine. <laughs> yeah, well, that that actually is probably a factor in the flavor yeah. of this drink, actually. Yeah, it's not so. that crappy, sugary cherry juice that you buy. Yeah, this, this is, is the real deal. Good, sugary pomegranate juice. <laughs> hey, it's, it makes a difference, though. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, I'm I'm back. Yeah. Um, Have a good vacation. It was it was nice. Was it uh, relaxing? It was not not <laughs> relaxing. You you didn't uh, come home feeling refreshed. <laughs> no, not not exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> with my brother's family, so two toddlers. Yeah, they have to be occupied all the time. Um, they don't know how to say I'm tired and quit. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then they get. I don't know what an appropriate word would be. Because I don't want to be insulting either. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're great kids, but yeah. Um, well, kids, ha- all kids have this thing, especially at that age, where like exactly what you're saying, like they're tired and they need to go to bed or take a nap, but they don't recognize that. So then they just get like ornery, and like yeah, and and the the only way to really fix it is to force them to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. Which sometimes is an option if you're in the middle of Disney World, or I know that's not where you were at, but no. just using that as an example, <laughs> as if you're somewhere where that's just not an option. So Yeah, I would have been perfectly content, like, sitting on the back porch of the place we were staying, like, listening to forest sounds and reading a book. Yeah, yeah. With a glass of whiskey. Yeah. I did find some good whiskey while I was... Out there. Uh, your, your average toddler toddler is not going to be down for that activity. No, <laughs> no. I, I only got to sit on the back porch once, and that's when they were playing in the pool. Yeah, and read. Sit. They weren't reading in the pool. I was reading on the back porch. You <laughs> yeah, <know. laughs> they were being violent in the pool. I'm sure. <laughs> Probably. I um. When I'm trying to stab my eye out. Yeah. In the pool. In the pool. In yeah, the that pool. was a pool activity. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I was like, explaining to my brother. I was like, well. To be fair, I like I went to duck down right at the moment. So he wasn't trying to stab me in the eye. Yeah. I mean he was trying to stab me, but that's not where he was trying <laughs> that, to that stab That wasn't where me. he was aiming, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. But I didn't even get a black eye, so I didn't have to explain to anybody that I got my black eye from a three year old. <laughs> well, that's uh, always good. Yeah. Um mm. <laughs> although when I was joking about that too. You might have said the same thing at some point, but my brother was like, look, anybody with kids gets it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. yeah. It's not, you didn't lose the fight. It's just, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but it was it was fun. I like, I had a good time up there. It was, uh, I worked way more than I would like to have yeah. for a vacation. Yeah. Uh, I did not, however, read any news. Yeah. Um, I watched some Olympics. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Did you catch the break dancing? I caught a little bit of the break dancing. Yep. Yeah. I think I watched the semifinals with that Japanese chick. 
Oh, did you? Mm. Yeah. The only of the women. I don't know. I assume there was a men's category too. The only break dancing I caught was the Australian, and that was obviously on the replay because everybody was talking about it. Is that the ray gun or whatever yes. that I keep seeing in, in <laughs> headlines in all the everywhere? Memes, yeah. What is that about? Um, I she I I don't exactly know. Other than what my understanding is, is that was just the best that the Australians had. And like, she clearly doesn't know how to break dance. <laughs> oh. okay. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you haven't watched, I'm assuming you haven't watched I, her. No, you should, when, when we get done recording, you need to pull it up and just watch it <laughs> because it's kind of, it's outrageous. Like, and okay. I mean, it was entertaining. Like, I mean, I mean, and, and in her defense, like she's better than me. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, but not, not by a lot apparently. So, but yeah, that was the only I, I, I didn't seen really you break dance, but um, yeah, it, I it, imagine it is still by a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. You haven't seen this video yet, that's true, so that's true. <laughs> um, reserve judgment. Yeah, exactly. But but yeah, I didn't really watch a lot of Olympics. It's not not um, my jam. I got to watch a bunch of volleyball, which is something that I never get to see, and I love volleyball. Yeah, I'm terrible at it. I like yeah. I can't play volleyball for this is like the one sport that I ever tried to play that I was just absolutely atrocious. You just, you just at. don't have just, any skill yeah. at. Yeah. Um, I mean, like everything else that I played, I was at least proficient, not volleyball. Really? Yeah. Could never get it, but I, I love it. I love watching the play. Yeah. Uh, men or women, um, beach or inside that I don't care. You just like, enjoy it's just, it. It's a, it's a fun, exciting game to watch. Yeah. Uh -huh. I so I got to watch a bunch of volleyball and I got to watch some water polo, yeah. which, uh, you never, ever, ever get to see. <laughs> yeah. And I like water polo too. Um, it's not as much fun to watch as volleyball, but it's, it's interesting. And I think I had partly like I played some water polo. Yeah. Um, not like real organized or anything, but, uh, you know, in places with big pools that had like little water polo setups, I would play pickup water polo, such as it is. Yeah. And, uh, and I swam a lot, you know, when yeah. I was younger, I, I lifeguarded and I swam, uh, I did swim team and I like, I, I lived in the water, like yeah. started swimming literally when I was like six months old. So yeah, maybe more like eight, I guess, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Cause I was born in October. So <laughs> yeah, but m my mom had me in Lake in Maine when I like that next summer. Yeah. So anyway, um, that sport is incredibly exhausting. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I can imagine that one's a hard one on the body. Yeah, yeah. it's it's rough. I mean, because in in real water polo, like you can't you have to tread water the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're if you're in, you can't like sink down to the bottom and push off or yeah. anything like you have to tread water yeah. the whole time yeah. um, that plays going on. So it's, uh, it's pretty demanding and especially like the, um, the power you have to have in your legs to it, like, you do a different kind of kick. It's not like you're doing scissor kicks or whatever under the water you do. Like essentially you're like, this is going to be, I'm sorry for those of you that are listening, <laughs> but now I'm on this. Um, the, the kick you do, you're kind of like in a sitting position and you're rotating your lower leg. Yeah. So you're doing like little circles with your lower leg. Um, and that's, that's your tread water position. That's, for, your, that's your maintaining position. Yeah. Um, and if you do it really fast, you can get it and you have good leg strength. Yeah. You can get half your body out of the water. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I could do that for a few seconds yeah, but you can't maintain that position. But yeah, yeah, especially like watching the their goalkeepers that, you know, the ball's kind of being moved around and there's somebody that's looking at a shot and he's keeping his body up out of the water for, <laughs> you know, 15 seconds or something. Like, yeah. I, it's unreal to watch. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. Like, I enjoyed, I enjoyed seeing some sports that I don't usually get to see. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that was downtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the kids were napping. Yeah, watching the Olympics. Yeah. And yeah. what I had on in the background when I was working. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so um, so it was a good trip, though. And, yeah, no news for a week was actually kind of nice, except I spent, well, after catching up at work, because even after working a bunch, 
Still had catching up to do. Still had a lot of catching up to do. I had to get payroll out this week. And uh, so maybe I'm underprepared, and that's why I'm wasting a bunch of time talking about this. So we're like 10 minutes in, and we haven't talked about <laughs> anything really. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I have tried to catch up on some news. We definitely missed some stuff. Um, Kamala announced her running mate, her vice presidential candidate. Yeah. Something Tim, Walls. Tim Walls. Tim Walls. I think. Um, <laughs> don't quote me. It's Walls something. Yeah. Pretty sure it's Tim. I, uh, the only thing that really stood out to me about it is that it was announced in Pennsylvania, which is where Shapiro is from. Yeah. I thought that was a real snub. Well, either uh, that or do you really think, I mean, I kind of wondered if it just kind of came to the wire that much, that they really didn't know which direction they were going to go, and they were leaning towards Shapiro and ended up with Walls, <laughs> and that's just kind of where they were at. I don't know. I don't think that they could ever really go with Shapiro. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot the, of people thought that that was the guy, though. Yeah, but it's it's bad for a lot of their base Yeah. Um, to get the, like— Zionist Jew while this war is going on yeah, where there's still a strong contingent on the left that recognizes that the Palestinians are oppressed people. And yeah. So even though, you know, well, you should, that's actually kind of another issue that, um, Kamala, despite some of her rhetoric is still going to support Israel through and through. Yeah. Uh, it can't be so open as having, um, a Jewish guy as the vice presidential candidate. I don't think, yeah. I mean, I don't think that he was, he could ever really have been an option. For yeah. Them. Uh, like I say, I don't know. Although, but what kind of name is walls? Hmm. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I kind of wonder, I mean, maybe the plan was to get uh Shapiro in there and that's why they scheduled it for, yeah. Pennsylvania. But to me, it just felt like a snub. Yeah. Well, I mean, if that wasn't the case, then, then it, kind of is a snub <laughs> like you know i mean that was like yeah i don't know it's it's interesting as far as tim walls goes i mean i don't know a whole lot about the guy i've kind of learned a little bit since he was made the candidate or whatever mm -hmm. um the only thing i really that stands out to me about him is just bad with covid um like a lot of folks were but um as as a governor he was pretty pretty yeah, he me. was one of those that like set up hotlines for you to tell on your neighbor and stuff, yes. wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which I have a real problem with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, my neighbor has too many people over at their house. Yeah, like especially bring in the cops to bust up that dinner party. Yeah, like I mean, <laughs> just the whole idea of that is just just crazy to me. Yeah, it it seems so anti-American to encourage that kind of behavior. Yeah, I mean, but the we're, truth we're not is, Australia, but we're still a, like a nation of outlaws in a lot of ways, <laughs> I think. I yeah. Mean. Um, well, yeah. And you really think about it, like going back to that time, that was really the only I mean, they'll never have enough cops to enforce those type of things. Like if you really want to get that type of enforcement, the only, that's the only way to do it. And there's so many people out there that are like just willing to buy in and be that, you know. I'm going to call on cops on my neighbors because they had a dinner party or, you know, there's a guy walking his dog on the beach. I'm going to call the cops on him. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's astounding to me that, that we even went through that as a country. Like, yeah. Um, it's a real powerful tool of authoritarianism yeah. is to turn the citizens against each other. Yeah. Makes it easier on the government. Yeah, and it works because mm. a, a lot of people like buy into that. You, know, you get well, you get that serotonin want approval from authority. Exactly. Well, you get that serotonin hit when you do it. You know, mm. oh, like I got them. You know, like yeah. you know. There's luckily, I mean, I think it's people that have like a great respect for authority or a low self esteem or something to begin with. Yeah, which is a lot more people than I than it should be. <laughs> Unfortunately. I think it's, I think it's, I actually think it's a strong majority, which is, which is the reason, terrifying. which is, yeah, which is a dangerous thing for us as a country. Yeah. I mean, I think that your people that are, that are dissidents or anti-authoritarian to begin with, I mean, I, I think people, I think people like you and me would never get sucked into that. Yeah, I would agree with that. 
And there's plenty of people like us out there. So, but the the real hopefully pro- a lot of them are listening to this podcast. <laughs> the and real problem is, is we're not the majority though. Yeah. Um, like that. I mean, co- if COVID taught us anything, it's that that mm-hmm. that we're like there are us out there, but we're the minority. Yeah. Um. So that's something that people like us have got to kind of keep in mind. And that's like a good reason for us to even do this podcast is to like get some of these messages out there. I kind of wonder how many of those people are actually seeking the approval of the authority and how many of them are just like go along to get along. Yeah. Well, there's some of both. Um, Well, certainly like I, I wonder if I should be less, um, pessimistic about this because it's not really that a majority of the people just want authorities approval that it's a minority, but then there's another minority that just doesn't want to deal with the backlash. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, is the, I wonder if they're worse actually in some ways. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Hmm. I I don't know. At, at least the at least the people that want authorities approval have a goal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't the, know that that makes it better though. I, like Well, I mean, you know, they just picked the wrong side. Yeah. I was thinking earlier this week. I I kept I don't even remember in what context it was. Um but oh, I think it was okay cuz uh Susan Wojcicki or however you say her name who uh had been uh, at the head of YouTube during the COVID oh, era. Yeah. Um, she died. And I'll probably talk more about that at a later date. But um I guess I I kept hearing a clip of her saying that uh YouTube was um being real strict about I mean she didn't say it like this, but about enforcing the propaganda yeah. line. Um because uh there were company that wanted to, that was going to be on the right side of history. Yeah. And I've heard this phrase a few times about being on the right side of history. And I, I, I'd like to think that this is a more modern kind of issue that people weren't really concerned about being on the right side of history, no matter where they were standing Yeah. Uh, in the past. I think that that's now that everybody kind of has the potential for global reach, this idea of being on the right side of history now, Means mean, m- means a little more. Yeah, it means something at all. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But, I don't know, it's just musing, so I don't really have a strong feeling about this, but the the times that I've encountered this idea of being on the right side of history, it's like the people that most want to be on the right side of history... Are on the wrong side? Yeah. Yeah, no, I've, I've definitely observed that myself. And um, I wonder if that fits in with this, like seeking the approval of authority. Yeah. Kind of, I don't know. Anyway, I, mean, I, I can definitely see how it would. Something uh, to think about. If you have an opinion on this, I would love to hear it. Cause yeah. this is just like, this is just like a, like a burgeoning thought in my head. I haven't really explored it. Yeah. Um, but, well, the winner is always right. The history. So you have to keep that in mind too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, so I don't know that plays in there somehow. So what were we talking? We we're talking about. We we're talking Kamala? about Tim Waltz. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so you have any other him, thoughts on him, him trying to be on the right side of history? Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I don't, I don't really. Which, have by a- the way, he's not campaigning on any of that now. He's well, not yeah, talking I'm about sure. how he was the lockdown governor. Like that's not a point of pride. Yeah. So I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, I ain't heard him making his speeches about that yet. Hmm. So what is he speeching about? I, you know, I don't really know to be truthful with you. Okay. I haven't, I haven't, the truth is I haven't really dug in on him that much. Like I know about the COVID, a little bit of COVID stuff and that's really it. I've, I've only seen a very little bit of him and he just kind of comes off with this like happy go lucky. Yeah. Kind of thing. Can, so th- that attitude is probably good for their campaign. Yeah. No, I'd agree with that. Um, now, Kamala hasn't done any real press. Yeah. Like media appearances. So, like everything's been scripted so far. I saw a headline. The, re- the reason I bring this up is because yeah. I saw a headline um, that said something like uh, that Kamala hasn't spoken to the press and Republicans have noticed. And <laughs> I, I think thought, we've like, all noticed. <laughs> this is a, in a headline. Like 
come on, media, shouldn't you have noticed <laughs> and maybe tried to do something? About it? Isn't right? this your job? Yeah, that's literally your your thing. It it is funny because, um, you know, I just think back to the Trump years and. Like Trump was in front of a camera all the time. He was doing press conferences. He was talking outside the helicopter. I mean, that was the thing that has a lot actually was talking outside the helicopter. Like anytime man there was can't stop talking, the man was talking to the press all the time. But that's a stark difference between Biden. Like Biden never talks. I mean, rarely. And when he does, you can't understand him. So it's like there's that. Yeah, um, this is supposed to be the most transparent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you can't seem to corner yeah. the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Kamala's the same way. And the, there's a there's a reason that both of them are avoiding the press the way they are. Biden through his whole administration, and mm-hmm. Kamala now is because they know that neither of them are good at it. Yeah. Like they like they can give a canned speech in front of an audience mm-hmm. and then walk off stage and that be that. But well, they. Biden sometimes can't find his That's, way off stage. Yeah, no, Biden's a little <laughs> iffy in that category now too. But but between the two of them, they can kind of get that job done. But in front, just one on one in front of a camera with a reporter, like they they fold. They yeah, just they're, unscripted is a problem, and and that's that's why I th- I. Okay, so I've been saying since this announcement. All right, well, Trump's absolutely got it in the bag now. Yeah, and um. The thing I've been noticing is, like, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure either, by the way. And I just think, like, somehow, yeah, to me, it, I just come off and, like, I'm not trying to be, um, I, I'm not trying to be condescending. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just comes off to me as, like, stupid voters Mm -hmm. like somehow kamala has gotten a pass for everything that the administration has done well like everything throughout this administration well she's just the vice president we know the vice president doesn't do anything she has nothing to do with the uh inflation or the foreign policy mistakes or the you know whatever so, so what you have to remember is she's getting a pass for that in the media um, I don't know that she'll get a pass for that in the voters box, Hi. and and I may be wrong. I'm I am concerned about it because uh, Kamala Harris as president te- petrifies me. I mean, I'll just oh, say yeah. that. <laughs> um, so so you know where I'm coming from here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I do think that she's got a chance just because. They know they've got to avoid the media. They've been doing it, and the media is going to give them a pass. Like the media is not going to press her to do an interview because they know they because the media is in her pocket. Yeah. Um. So, and and it was the same way with Biden, which at least he did have the excuse of COVID. Not that I think that that was a legitimate excuse, but that was what they used to kind of put him in the basement during his campaign. Um. And the media is going to do the same thing for Kamala now. She can't um, do it all the way to November, though, and you don't think so. I mean, I she'll don't she'll think have so. to she'll have to do something, but she's not going to be in front of she's not going to be doing a whole bunch of sit downs. Like I would, well, if yeah. I was the wager, she'll probably do the debates, maybe one of them. I, I think she'll do some sit downs. It ain't going to be many though. N- but and they'll be scripted. and they'll be and they'll be scripted. That's yeah. the second thing. They'll is be like, scripted. She'll do I, some. She's not going to do a lot of stand up press conferences where people are just free to ask questions. No, that's that's. Uh, she may not do any of those. Yeah, I would be. If I she's would, smart, she wouldn't. I, yeah, and and she's actually proven herself to be more politically savvy than I would have given her credit for. Well, I think she's got to get. Before. I mean, I think that one. I think she. Any politician has some of that. So to have yeah. getting, gotten as far as she has, she has some of that. But she's got a team around her. Like, That's and true. my understanding is is that she's got a pretty sharp one um, to have gotten to where they're at. Mm-hmm. Um, now I don't know, but it, I just would like to contrast that with Trump, who has not been afraid to go in front of a hostile. Um, audience yeah. and media. Yeah, um, he came to the Libertarian. Convention. He came to the Libertarian Party. <laughs> he went to that um, conference of Black reporters. Yeah, like I mean, there it don't get that no was more. An interesting thing that happened while I was. Yeah. Or yeah, that's that happened while I was gone, so yeah. we never got to talk about that, and it's probably not worth talking. There's about, not a honestly, whole lot to but, say other than like it don't get more hostile than that for Trump. Well, then that ABC reporter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was. He's <laughs> all right. I guess we are going to talk about this. Later. All right. <laughs> um, he's 
been getting uh, a lot of grief about what he said about uh, Kamala in terms of race and so forth mm-hmm. at that. Oh, yeah. And uh, I mean, I heard the clips and what I heard was the reporter that was just going after him mm-hmm. and him answering these questions in this way and the crowd laughing. Yeah, well, that was that was the big <laughs> takeaway that I don't think that a lot. I mean, I don't know, but. Yeah, that was that was kind of the big takeaway is the audience was enjoying it. Yeah. And the audience was full of black reporters. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I, I mean, know. It, I think a lot of people, if they're being honest with themselves, would get it that she's. Yeah. I mean, it's just what I said when when um, they first announced that she was going to be the candidate is that she just goes with whatever she needs to go with to further her career. She's, and so sometimes that blows. was to, to emphasize that she was an Indian woman. And now it's more advantageous apparently to say she's black. And so that's what she's doing. Yeah. Well, and the same thing with her um, career as a prosecutor, mm-hmm. like and when she was in that position, the popular thing to do was to be, a hardcore prosecutor and prosecute every case you can and, and run those numbers up. Well, that's not the case anymore. And that, well, but that's what Trump needs to go after. That's, that's that's where she's her record as a prosecutor. Yeah. Um, he, Um, he needs to say he, he needs to leave the race thing alone, at least in the direct way that he's approaching it. Yeah. And say, if you want to talk about race, look at the damage that she did to black families when she was a prosecutor. And I don't know how sad. I mean, I think Trump just willy nilly's off instincts and yeah. it works for him. But you do <laughs> have to wonder if he's not saving that for October. Well, I, I mean, if because it would be smart. Like mm-hmm. it would be smart to save that towards the end of the campaign when they can't switch her out. They've done had the um, the the convention and everything, and she's legit the person. Mm-hmm. And then to just swat her with that, because that's what killed her campaign in the primary. That's true. Um, um, but it, then he, the smart thing for him to do now would be to just ignore her. Yeah. Well, there's I, that. Yeah. I mean, instead of instead of bringing up the race thing and creating and and giving the media an opportunity to emphasize the Trump is a racist thing. Yeah. Because um, that makes people uncomfortable. It does. Yeah. That is to just ignore her and let her speak for herself because yeah cuz that'll that's be enough for her. <laughs> yeah cuz that's enough right yeah <laughs> um uh, it's it's interesting like it's going to be an interesting race and i don't like i say i feel like trump should is going to win this thing mm. but i don't think it's a slam dunk like a lot of people think it is yeah. um, because, and don't underestimate the power of the Democrats to just vote blue, no matter who. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, that's a, that's a powerful force um, that's out there. Yeah. I, that's kind of impressive. It's just a, a matter of that. The, the right tends to be more individualistic. The left tends to be more, um, I got a better word than like, group collective collectivist yeah yeah no they are and uh and that's certainly to their benefit like you know when it comes down to it they get in line yeah it is something i was thinking about i think today and i don't know what kind of drove this thought to my mind but and it could just be where we live down here but you just like i hear a lot all the time of people who who left the left and are, are embracing more conservative views and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And you just don't hear people go in the other direction anymore. Like, well, yeah. you know, I used to be, I used to be a Republican, but now I'm a Democrat. Like, and, and it is a funny thing. Cause when I was thinking about, it, I was like, well, you do hear that as far as like career politicians, mm-hmm. they're like, you know, I just, I can't get down with Trump. Like you say, they, so they start to lean more towards the left, but that's because they're just bought and sold by the system. And the system's against Trump. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about. But you don't hear like everyday folk. Like everyday folk just seem to kind of be leaving the left. And it doesn't seem to go the other way. Well, that difference between the left and the right you see in the Libertarian Party too. Yeah. Because it's the left libertarians that are like, you know, vote libertarian no matter what. Like you got to support our candidate, et cetera, et cetera. And it's the more right-wing libertarians that are... The like no, I don't. 
I'm not yeah. getting behind this guy just because he's got an L next to his name. Exactly. Hmm. I don't know. Just kind of something to, to think about. Um, I, th- I think that the <laughs> maybe the big loss to Kamala, and it depends, but she's been so cagey in her language about what's going on in Israel. Yeah. Although she seems to be better than Biden on this issue. Yeah. And she seems to be better than Trump, frankly, <laughs> on this issue, too. Yeah. If you believe and that probably people, better than RFK on this issue. Yeah, might be. You know. Uh, now, she did shut up a group of, of um, pro-Palestinian uh, protesters at one of her rallies. Yeah. Yeah, because she knows that that's uh, it's such a touchy issue, and and all, they're all trying to walk a line right now. And I feel like the Democrats, I mean, you're talking about Kamala and Biden, so are trying to walk that line harder than the Republicans. Like like Trump's just kind of leaned in. Like yeah, yeah. Well, it's easier to do on the right. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, you can pick up more votes on the right by supporting Israel. Yeah. You're more likely to get the like the, you know the. The yeah. unaccounted for um, voting block is the the Zionist Christians in the U.S. Yeah, who mostly, as I understand it, don't really vote. Yeah, but you can pick up that group by pushing hard about supporting Israel in a situation like this. Yeah. So yeah, I just anything, don't know it very can earn many him more votes. Yeah, the 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 Democrats have to worry about the part of their base that supports the Palestinians. The Republicans yeah. don't. Yeah. There's have to worry just, about that. there's just not that many pro Palestinian Republicans. Nope. Like, I mean, I'm just saying there are not a whole lot of them out there. Now you can start talking to people and explain what the situation really is there. And there's enough people that under that, that are educated, but that's the no, real no, no. difference. It's, it's the lack of education is the problem. Well, there's no. enough people that, that believe in, self-determination and uh universal human rights on the right yeah that it, when you kind of explain the history the yeah. their perspective changes yeah and that's kind of what i was getting at is that there's just you gotta you gotta lead them to that though that mm-hmm. like they're not already there yeah but the pal the uh the israeli lobby in the u.s is a powerful entity and um, and we've seen it recently, and they are spending money oh, to yeah. make sure that the politicians stay on their side. So um, you had Jamal Bowman, who he's one of the kind of the squad type characters uh, in New York that they spent, I think, like, I, I get these numbers mixed up. So he and Corey Bush um, were both primaried out. Oh, really? Yes. So Jamal Bowman and Corey Bush, and I forget where she is, was. I guess she's still yeah, she, there. She, until, you know. yeah. But um, they were both primaried out, mostly, it seems, on APAC spending in their races. Wow. Um, and in one of their races, these are primary races now, and one of their races, APAC spent like $8 million, and one of them, they spent fifteen. Good night. And uh, Thomas Massey was talking about, I forget the number that he was talking about in his race, but they spent a ton of money in his primary race too, to try and get oh, rid of that, him. Yeah, that'd be like the gold standard for them to get rid of him. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, it didn't not. work for him. Yeah. It, so they, they, they're they not all powerful, obviously. They they can't yeah. get it all, but they but have they do been have successful. Powerful, though. And they're spending a bunch of money to make sure that they have their votes. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of impressive in a way. And then at the same time, you have like Scott Ritter having his house raided, um, with accusations that he's, he violated the, uh, FARA act, the foreign agent represent, no foreign, whatever it is. I thought it was the Logan act. No, no, no. It was, it was FARA. Was it? Okay. Yeah. It was, uh, foreign agents, whatever. You have to declare if you're representing a foreign government. Yeah. Um, Which he's not doing, by the way. Yeah, well, he <laughs> works for RT. He does, yeah. or actually, I, I should say, he does work for RT. Yeah. Now, RT is state media, and that's how they're going after it. Yeah. But 
Like, I don't see them going after uh, Americans that work for the BBC yeah. or France 24. Exactly. Those are both state media, too. Yeah. So, it's anyway, my point there is they're going after him for being an unregistered for, Foreign Agents Registration Act. That's what it is. Ah, okay. Thank you. Um, for being an unregistered foreign agent for Russia because he does work for RT. But they don't go after APAC. Yeah. Like, people that that work for APAC as foreign agents. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's your classic double standard mm -hmm. yeah. or people that work for the BBC to be fair, that yeah. bring yeah. up those other things, but the APAC's are really relevant. Yeah. And if you really want to be terrified about the power of the Israeli lobby in the U S go look up Viab. That's a uh, Victor India alpha Bravo. Okay. Um, it, it's the, um, Virginia Israeli Advisory Board. <laughs> so they're involved in state politics in Virginia um, and have lobbied to have preferential treatment to Israeli businessmen in Virginia over Americans. Wow. That's just like have lobbied successfully. Yeah. Have, have, to get have preferential yeah. treatment. Yeah. yeah that's for Israeli businesses in Virginia. Wow. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of money to be spent and to be made if you vote the right way, I suppose. I, yeah. It's all corrupt. Exactly. I think that's kind of the point. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we also last week missed, uh, the, <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Um, I'll explain my thought there in just a second. Right. Um, the, uh, Ukrainian invasion of Kursk, uh, in the Russian Republic. <laughs> yeah. So this has been a big deal on the mainstream media. Yeah. Uh, what made me laugh there is uh, we missed the invasion. I've been re-watching Generation Kill. Okay. Did you ever I, see that by any I chance? Didn't, no. Okay. It's um it's based on a book that was written about the uh Marine Force Recon in the Second Iraq War. Okay. And <laughs> I mean it's a whole lot of like typical military hurry up and wait stuff, but as they're going, as they're invading Iraq, yeah. when they finally get their orders, all these Marines that have been really hyped up about going, you know, <laughs> going to go do the thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're, they're going into Iraq. Finally, there's a scene they're going in at night and, um, the, uh, the sergeant in the front of the hump, they're invading Iraq and Humvees, by the way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, calls back to one of the other soldiers in his Humvee. And he says, wake up, you're missing the invasion. <laughs> just because yeah. nothing's happening. Because they're just like driving just in the driving, night. They're just driving, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it just made me think of that. It was funny. Yeah. Um, so it took, I mean, really the invasion stalled in two days, but we'll give them a week to yeah. be nice. It was a week to finally stall the invasion. They went in with a, a few thousand troops. Yeah. Okay. Can't invade a Russia with a few thousand <laughs> troops. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, woefully inadequate forces to invade <laughs> Russia. Um, it looks like they were going to try and capture the nuclear power plant in Kursk. Okay. Uh, that didn't work, so instead they shelled the nuclear power plant in Zaporizhia and yeah. then blamed the Russians. Yeah. Which doesn't make sense because the Russians control the plant. Why would they bomb their own plant? Yeah, right. Um, but uh, it... The suggestions I've seen have, have said that they were trying to capture the nuclear power plant in Kursk so maybe they could make a trade or yeah. or something like that, have some kind of pressure. Now, they pulled troops. This is The whole thing's stupid because they pulled troops off of their lines where they are losing ground in uh, Donetsk yeah. um, to mount this invasion of Russia, which, yeah, I mean, they were able to act in secrecy, hand it to them for that. Um, they got in there. Yeah. Uh, the, um, local forces fled, it seems in front of them. Yeah. Um, they weren't because they weren't prepared for that. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's some, you know, like local conscripts, not, it's like a militia, not yeah, a it's real not like army a legit, force. Yeah. It took very little time for the Russians to organize an actual military force to go oppose it. Yeah. Um, they certainly, they lost a lot of their force. Yeah. They were putting their best in there to do this invasion. I yeah. think, I mean, so then you start asking the question, like, why 
There weren't any military targets. It's not strategically valuable yeah. except for the, the nuclear plant, which they didn't get to. Yeah. Um, it seems like they wasted some of their best troops and best equipment on a PR stunt. Well, I mean, and I don't know how much of this is really true, but I mean, it, it could potentially have changed the narrative in Russia as far as the Russian people are concerned. Like, oh, well, now they're, they're, we're at, we actually have some skin in this game where we're not just sending soldiers. They're, they're, the attack is on the homeland. Yeah, but that's not the kind of way you want the perspective to change in Russia if you're Ukraine. You don't think so? No, absolutely yeah. not. Because as long as it's a foreign war, yeah, then people don't feel invested. Think about the difference between um, the first Iraq war and uh, after 9-11. Oh, well, yeah. No, you're right about that. <laughs> that definitely changed the... Yeah. And like once your homeland's attacked... Yeah. Then it's a rally around the flag kind of situation, which you probably... I mean, I, I, it seems, based on what I've read, that you already had that in Russia. But now yeah. that the like their territory has been invaded... Yeah. Then it just creates more patriot, patriotic fervor. Yeah. No, I, I guess you're right about that. I was thinking more in terms of people would be would would apply more pressure to tone it to to reel it back in because they don't want the homeland attacked. But but no, you're I think probably you have the but, exact opposite. You got you, you're actually that are right. Like, yeah. You better bring this up because we don't want our homeland attacked again. Yeah. No, I think I think you may be right about that. You know, quit playing with kid gloves. It's time to shut this thing down. Yeah, that's what you get when. Yeah. When you so do that. the real question I had is, how much um, U.S. hardware do you think was used during this? A lot. Little, which which is a problem for us, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I saw a um, a direct from uh, one of the soldiers involved on the Ukraine side that they rolled across the border in a striker. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So, like I say, that's. Not good for us. Like it's definitely an escalation that we don't need. Mm -hmm. There's been reports that it was a lot of foreign military people involved. Period. Yeah, uh, including Americans. Now I don't put a lot of stock in that. Yeah. I, I, I think that that. I mean, there's a lot of stories going around. I don't. Yeah, I don't think that that's likely. It, it would be pretty reckless for us to have like had a bunch of Americans on the ground for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, not that we haven't been reckless this whole time, but mm -hmm. it, it would be a, it would definitely be. A, but they get captured and. Yeah. Like, yeah, like that, so that could become an international affair, like in a hurry. Speaking of them getting captured, um, how about the, uh, the prisoner exchange with Russia? Yeah. I haven't really looked into a, uh, a lot of the details on this, but. No, I don't know a whole lot about it. Um. There's a lot of people that are uh, really critical of Biden making the deal with Russia to exchange prisoners. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, you're just encouraging foreign nations to capture Americans so that they can, you know, trade on favorable terms and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, there's always that argument, but mm -hmm. I don't think that argument's held by the people that were involved in the exchange. No, I, <laughs> I know that that's the case. So, and I'm like I say, I mean, I think it's, I mean, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like it's a, a good thing. I mean, anytime we're, you know, commu at this point, anytime we're communicating with the Russians, I think that's a win. Yeah. Uh, there's, yeah, uh, you're not wrong about that. And, uh, I just think that generally freeing people is better than not. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> obviously now, that's at the same time, um, of course, there's a lot of claim that, well, we were releasing Russian terrorists and the Russians were just releasing journalists that were falsely accused or whatever. Yeah, yeah I bet they're telling that same story on the other side. I bet they are. <laughs> yeah. I always kind of blow that type of talk off because yeah. both sides are going to oversell their position. Yeah. Uh, and that's just the way I, that's my default. I mean... <laughs> I know that we will, we like to be patriotic about that, but no, think about the people around you that have gotten pulled up into the the judicial system in this country. Yeah, 
Exactly. And think about whether, you know, maybe uh, the trumped up charges in Russia weren't that much different than the trumped up charges in the U.S. Yeah. And it's so easy for like innocent people to get just swept into that system. Mm -hmm. Um, We do a whole podcast on that. Absolutely. I mean, it's just the way the way our justice system is just jacked up, man. Mm -hmm. Um, So I am I am in favor of prisoner exchanges. Yeah. No, I agree. as a general rule, I'm in favor of prisoner exchanges. And uh, th- the truth is that, like, you can complain about. I mean, I know Brittany, Brittany Griner was part of a previous exchange, but there yeah. was another case kind of like hers. I just can't remember the person's name um, that was arrested for possession yeah. uh, in Russia. And people are like, oh, well, you know, like that Russia would even hold an American for this kind of thing. You know what? You can go to jail in a whole lot of states in this country for that, first off. Sure. We're living in one. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And secondly, you know, just because you're an American doesn't mean you get to ignore the laws of whatever country you're in. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you go somewhere else, you're liable under their laws. Yeah. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, even if I disagree with the law. Like, it's like when I go into somebody else's house... Yeah. And they tell me I have to take my shoes off before I walk on their carpet or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. I may think that's stupid. Obviously, I don't because I want people to do that in my house. But yeah. I, I may think that that's stupid. But I'm in their house. Yeah, absolutely. And if they won't let me walk any further until I take my shoes off, yeah. or if I try to walk further and they throw me out. Or pull a gun on you. Or whatever. <laughs> right. They're perfectly within their rights. That's their place. Yeah, I agree. So... I, getting all up in arms about like stupid laws that Russia has that Americans were arrested for. Well, no, they knew. Yeah, yeah. Well, and if they didn't, they should have educated themselves about it before they came. That's true. Or went. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Brittany Griner was working and living there. She certainly knew what the law was. Yeah, it should have. I um, think so. And I think the same is true for this other guy whose name I can't remember. Yeah. Um. I mean, whether you believe that the the former military guy was actually a spy or whether you believe that the other journalist was actually a spy, I mean, that's up to you. But it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. No, I agree. You know. And I don't think that Russia is generally just trying to be antagonistic towards Americans. Yeah. <laughs> I think that shoes on the other foot. <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. I don't think that, the, honestly, I don't think that the U.S. is trying to be generally antagonistic towards Russians either. Yeah. Towards Russia, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but not towards that, Russians. That may be fair. That may be fair. So, um, I don't know. Just, like, maybe don't accept the narrative <laughs> the, on yeah. this. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know enough about it to, like, speak with authority, but... Um, just in I, general, I know some though. history that <laughs> that leads you a certain direction. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, for example, um, apparently the Trump campaign was hacked by Iran oh, and they yeah. released this information to media. Yeah. OK, I, just like Russia. And OK, so they they pushed on from that, of course. Everything's Iran right now anyway. Yep. Um, but they pushed on from that and said uh, also that the you know intelligence agencies are claiming that they have good evidence that um, Iran is trying to influence the U.S. election. Yeah. Well, that holds about as much water as the Russia was influencing the election in 2020. Hey, you say that, but there's still people that believe that. Oh, I know, I know. Or 2016. 2016. Were they, they weren't really talking about that in yeah, 2020 because Biden was, won. Yeah, that was a, yeah it, it right. would have been different. But yeah, no, that was a 2016 talking point. Yeah. So, so I mean, maybe they're trying to assert some influence, which they are actually welcome to do. Yeah. I uh, I guess I'm just generally um, frustrated with the idea that, that you know of government censorship anyway. With the YouTube thing coming up, I just I've been thinking about these issues a lot, and all all of this stuff is like trying to control this information in a way. Obviously, it has its own like nefarious ends, trying to control information. Period. But the idea that you can't be exposed to contrary opinions. Yeah. 
shows a real lack of confidence on an American's ability to like suss things out for themselves. Yeah. And maybe the government has good reason for that since they, you know, control the schools and they know what kind of education they're providing. <laughs> but Oh, that's true. But the idea generally that uh, the government must protect you from bad information because you're too stupid to figure it out yourself. Yeah. Is just really insulting to me and it should be insulting to everybody. Yeah. Unless you actually think that you're too stupid to figure it out, which yeah. maybe there's some of you out there. Uh, I don't think they're listening to this podcast, but <laughs> but those people they are. aren't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> those people do exist, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah the the idea that Iran hacked the Trump campaign is just yeah stupid beyond words. I think. <laughs> but it makes me laugh every time I hear something like that. Yeah. Well, it seems like we would get more out of it than what we got. Like, I mean, it sounds, what was it? like? I don't a, even know what the information was. It was, it was a little obviously bit Obviously irrelevant. It was a little bit of stuff on J.D. Vance. I don't think it was anything like. Oh, they, they did a background on it. Yeah, you. exactly. That's yeah, exactly surprise. what it was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like nothing, nothing groundbreaking or relevant there for sure. If you were hiring an assistant to whatever you do for a living. Yeah. Wouldn't you want some background on that person? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> before just you little. hired them. <laughs> oh. And now if you want to be president of the United States and you're hiring an assistant for that job. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to know every angle of everything? Like, yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. Uh -huh. like, I don't know. So, uh, I, we live in a world of absurdity at this point. It's, I you don't really know do. <laughs> how to express. And I, I I'm this has so, got to be the craziest timeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to express how ridiculous I think that this has all become. And it, I mean, it's, it's been kind of ridiculous my whole life, but it's accelerated. Man, ever since 2016, man, I'm telling you, that's where the split came. <laughs> like one side, one side went to Hillary Clinton and one side went to Trump. And the side that went to Hillary Clinton's gone. Like they were nuclear weapons went pretty quick, but we're stuck in this crazy timeline. Oh, I, I got, I understand yeah. what you mean now. Yeah. I don't know. There was a, uh, you know, 2008 was a weird one. Yeah, but it wasn't nothing like this, though. And 2008 wasn't... I mean, it was... I mean, a lot happened during John that. John McCain could have been the president. <sighs> but he couldn't have been. Like, it just... It was never going to happen. There's another timeline that ended that with did. nuclear war <laughs> yeah. when John McCain got elected, yeah. too. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, no. Uh, you, maybe you're right. I just... Like the whole time John McCain was running, I was like, this guy's never going to be president. Like it's just not going to, and I wasn't even as um, anti-war as I am now because I was a little bit of a different person. I was still a libertarian, but I wasn't as hard on the foreign policy stuff as I am, no, as knowledgeable, I'll put it that way, on the foreign policy stuff as I am now. Yeah. And I still couldn't stand John McCain. <laughs> like it's just... I don't, yeah, I never saw that one playing out. Mm. But Hillary Clinton could have been president. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was, we were close there. We were close to being in that timeline. Mm. <laughs> She's just so unlikable. Yeah. No charisma. Vote blue no matter who. That's the difference, though, is that the, the Democrats will rally and the Republicans just won't. <laughs> like, they took one look I at, hate her, but I'll vote for her anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I talked to plenty of those Democrats like that that said exactly that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's that oh, was she's terrible, but I can't vote for Donald but Trump. But Trump is just so much worse. And it's like, yeah. is he? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't see it. Like I, I don't understand people that vote on personality really. Yeah. I mean, okay, to, and I to say some degree I get that because like there's the difference between um, the guy that gets shot at and crawls off stage or curls up in the fetal position and the guy that stands up and shakes his fist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, so that's a personality issue that yeah, that, seems significant. That, yeah, exactly. Like relevant to the job that the person's being asked to do. 100% agree. Um, but like, 
he's a nice guy or he's not a nice guy. He well, cheats on his wife or he doesn't. He, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. These those, kind of things. those type of things are just, and I, honestly, I want the guy that's not really the nice guy. Like I, I think the nice guy just ends up in that yeah, position as a doormat. pushover. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Which I guess again is a personality issue, but that, but, but more it's that I'm more concerned with the kind of policies that they promote. Yeah. Than the kind of person that they are. Yeah. I agree with that. And uh, I don't, even though they're, what is it? Uh, who is, is it Scott Horton's rule that they're going to, per- that they're going to, Put in all the policies that you didn't like and, and yeah, yeah, ignore yeah, the ones that, that you did. <laughs> Scott Horton's law is that uh, every candidate, um, once they're elected, will um, follow through in all their bad policies and not on any of their good policies. Yeah. And that one seems to play out, man. Like, but I, I'm I'm actually partial to Tom Woods' law, which is no matter who you elect, you end up with John, <laughs> John McCain. McCain. <laughs> yeah. No, that one that one pans out for sure. Like. <laughs> So. There is that move from the neocons to try and find their new way in. Yeah. Though I, it's you, you can't get rid of these people. No, I mean that's it's it's something you can't do. Um. Well, on that note, you have anything else? No, I don't. I'm ready to wrap up. Yeah. I'm I'm uncomfortable sitting here, and it's too hot in this house. <laughs> yeah. And you came over like right after I got home, so I'm Threw still a, wearing work clothes. Me too. I came over right after work too. Yeah, but you always do. I like to be. No, in, I go home and change. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be in pajamas by the time I, no. <laughs> we're recording this. Um, okay, well, we'll we'll wrap up then. There. So, uh, next week will be a little different. Yeah, I, I'm I'm planning to do a solo podcast next week because. Uh, Liberty Larry won't be here. I'll be out of town. So I don't want to skip another week so quickly. So, um, and I don't want to just play the one we have in the can. I've got some ideas of some things that I'd like to talk about. Um, I'd like to talk about, uh, I'd like to talk about the COVID stuff again. I'm sorry, everyone, (laughs) but it's time to revisit. I think it needs to be done periodically. And I think it needs to be done periodically for now till the end of time. Because <laughs> yeah. this is, dude, we cannot forget about what was done to us or they will do it again. Well, yeah, there's already plans for that. Exactly. Well, dude, I got a thing today, a news alert saying they were making monkeypox uh, um like world health emergency or oh my something. Goodness. Like I mean I, I literally I like I don't remember the exact quote, but it was it was a headline I got today. Well, so yeah, I've been reading some older stuff and, and so it's not, it's not really going to be about COVID so much as just like public health care. Okay. Um, is my plan anyway. Wow. Uh, and then I would like to talk about some, um, UN stuff and international law and, uh, recognized human rights and so forth. So yeah. I, I feel like those two things, they're kind of evergreen stuff and, um, worth talking about and should should i should be able to fill time with yeah and make it interesting yeah well i mean obviously (laughs) that's always the goal right (laughs) yeah (laughs) beyond everything else i try to be interesting yes above all (laughs) yes um okay so uh there there should be a podcast next week i'm always like i'm a terrible procrastinator though so I wouldn't really expect it till the weekend. <laughs> well, <if laughs> when I wait. don't have anything else to do in the day, that's when I'm most likely to record it. Fair enough. So if you wait long enough, I may be here with you. Yeah, I'm not counting on that, though. I wouldn't count on you, that. Because you I told w- me not to. I, I did tell you not to, and you should. So, take oh, I'll that. be back on Friday, but don't expect me to record. That's pretty much what you said. So, <laughs> well, I'm going to be coming off of a very intense trip. Hopefully relaxing, but intense nevertheless. Okay. Well, um, 
one way or another, we'll be back next week. Or I'll be back next week. Somebody will be back next The Liberty Mike podcast will be back next week. Awesome. <laughs> And uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, subscribe, um, leave uh, reviews. You can always email me at michael at the com if you don't want your review public. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, the thing that I was asking about earlier about people on the wrong side of history that want to be on the right side of history and so forth, if you have some thoughts... Please share them because, like, I haven't. I'd like to dig into this a little more, and I like to. Uh, I like to hear other people's ideas, yeah. Especially when I'm like first exploring some thoughts. So, yeah. um, Michael at thelibertymike dot com. I will probably even respond to you. Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really try to be good about that. Sometimes there's just too much to do. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, like I said, one way or another, we'll be back next week when we or me finally get this right. I'm aware of my bad grammar there. Um, and in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.